All right, so this module has an assessment that takes the form of a practical assessment. Completing this assessment is an essential requirement for subsequent parts of the course. Uh, this is how it works. Students arrive, they complete the assessment in front of an assessor. If they pass the assessment, then they're awarded a certificate or some form of confirmation that the student can take to show at a placement or submit into an assignment. If a student fails the assessment, they'll need to go back and work on things so that they can present again. This cycle continues until all the students have successfully completed the assessment. The question is, how can we use technology to make this process as efficient as possible? Now for this, we're going to be using two ingredients. Firstly, we'll be using the Moodle checklist activity to act as a kind of register where the instructor can tick off those students who successfully complete the assessment. Then we'll use the certificate activity to automatically send students a certificate if they successfully complete the assessment. Let's start by setting up the checklist. In Moodle, turn editing on, navigate to the assessment and feedback section and click on add an activity or resource. Select Checklist. Give the activity a name. And now let's look at the setting. Now this list is going to be something that only instructors can complete, so we don't want users to be able to add their own items or comments. And we only want teachers to be able to make updates. That'll do for now. Let's save and display. Now in the checklist itself, we only need there to be one item, a simple list to indicate if the assessment has been successfully completed. And that's it. If I click on the View Progress tab, I can now see a list of my students with a simple checkbox to indicate if they have successfully completed the assessment. Now, when the student comes to take the assessment, I can click on the Edit Checks tab. As each student passes through, I can update the checklist to yes for a successful assessment or no for an unsuccessful assessment. So far, so good. Let's go back to the course page. Here's our checklist. And of course, because the students won't be using the checklist themselves, they don't really need to see it. So I can click on the item menu and hide it from students. Now on to our second ingredient, the certificate. Again, click on add an activity or resource and choose the certificate activity. Give the certificate a name. And let's look at the options here. In the delivery options, you can choose to force download, but it's generally fine to leave this to the default setting. It's a good idea to enable the emailing options for students. This means that a copy of the certificate will automatically end up in the student email inbox. It's also a good idea to check the protections here. We don't really want the students to be able to modify or copy the certificate, so we can leave these ticked. However, if we want the students to be able to present their certificate, we should ensure that they're able to download them. Save and display. Now inside the certificate activity, we can use these tabs along the top to go back and modify the settings. But right now we need to set up the certificate itself. So we'll click on Edit Certificate. Now by default, the certificate is simply a blank document. We need to add elements to it, like a background, a title, course information, and so on. The dimensions tell us that the document will be an A4 portrait size. If we want a landscape certificate, we can always swap the height and the width, but I'll leave this as it is. Let's look at the elements we can add to our certificate. Now, there are a bunch here that we don't really need to worry about, but let's begin by adding a background. You can create a background however you want. Canva is a great place to get some nice backgrounds. Just create an A4 document like a worksheet. Go to Elements and search for Background Images. Drag your image onto the page and reshape it to fill the document. 
Now go to Share and download the document as an image. So JPEG or PNG would be perfect. And to make life easier, I've created a few backgrounds for you and there's a link to them in the description below. Back in the certificate activity, I can choose the background element. And here I can use this drop down menu to pick any of the images that I've already uploaded. If you want to upload a new image, simply drag it into the upload area and then go back to the drop down menu to select it. Click on Save Changes. Now, at any point, you can view your certificate design by clicking on the Save Changes and Preview button. Now, in the same way, I can add a border. This border is very simple. I can adjust the width and the color, but that's it. If you want a more elaborate border, the best thing to do is to include the border in your background image, like these examples. Now, let's add some text. For example, we might want to say that the certificate is being presented to. I'll change the font size to 17, the X or width position to 105, which is in the middle of the page, and the Y position to 72. I'll also align the text to the center. After which we can add the student name. Now I want this to be bigger, so I'll make the font size 45. The X position will again be 105 and the Y position 83. Align the text to the centre. Then perhaps some more text to say what they've been presented the certificate for. I'll make this font size 27 and I'm going to change the font to italic. The X position 105 and the Y position 120. Now because this description can end up quite long, I'm going to specify a width of 800. This means that the description will run on to another line rather than simply continuing off the page. Again, align the text to the center. And to finish, I can add the date the certificate was issued. Font size 12, X position 105 and the Y position 230. Again, align the text to center. Now that I have all my elements, I can check that everything looks OK by clicking on the link to reposition element. Here, if I want to move anything around, I can simply drag them. If I want to change the text itself or the size or color, I can double click any element and go straight in and edit the setting. OK, so my certificate is set up and ready to go, and the checklist is ready to go. Let's go back to our workflow and see how these two need to work together. The certificate should only be available to students who have successfully completed the assessment. This means we need to restrict access to the certificate so that students who have not yet completed the assessment cannot access it. The condition for getting access to the certificate is being ticked off in a checklist. If the student has a tick next to them in the checklist, they get the certificate. So first of all, let's add some completion criteria to the checklist. Into the settings and down to the activity completion setting. I want this activity to automatically show as complete when all the items are checked. In this case, there's only one item, so I'll set it to 100%. And that's it. Now let's go back to the certificate. We want to restrict access to the certificate so that it is only available to students who've completed the checklist. So we can go into the settings and look for restrict access. Set it to activity completion and choose the checklist. So now students must have completed the checklist in order to access the certificate. And that's the workflow finished. Students arrive to take the assessment. If they're successful, 
the instructor ticks the checklist. The student can then automatically access their digital certificate, which they can print out and take with them. If students are unsuccessful, they cannot access the certificate and will need to re-attempt the assessment. 